Ink Ribbon. Have you ever wanted to step into a game world and just catch your breath? I know I have. We already talked about when gaming went through the brown phase, and that is what it is. But today we're going to slide across the color spectrum because today's video is all about the color blue. Now primary colors are the building blocks of pretty much all other colors and carry a lot of weight, not just in hue, but also in how they affect your mind. Yes, you. Red can invoke anger and passion, yellow can provide a feeling of joy and energy, but we'll save those for another video. Instead, let's focus on the third primary color, blue. In case you couldn't tell by my channel branding, my favorite color is blue. Not this blue, but actually this blue, which is cerulean. And every time that I see this color, I just, ah, uh, uh, I, I, it, it makes me so happy. I can feel my body and my brain react to it. Which, by the way, is how you know what your favorite color is. When you look at a color and it makes you just feel such a strong, positive emotion. I mean, you've got to have a color that does that to you when you look at it. Or is that just me? <laughs> and if you're thinking to yourself that your favorite color is also blue, well, that's not too surprising. Blue is by far the most popular color, as shown in many, many studies and surveys conducted in multiple countries over the years, and that totally makes sense. Even looking at the best-selling Pokemon games shows the popularity of Blue. In the first-gen Pokemon games, consisting of Blue and Red, Pokemon Blue sold over 1 million copies more than Red, and moving to X and Y, Blue and Red respectively, X sold over 1.5 million units more than its Red Y counterpart. Blue is a color associated with a vast amount of psychological effects on the brain, with the most common one being a feeling of calmness. Throughout video games, the color blue has been used in several ways, almost always affecting the mindset or the mood of the player. For example, you may be familiar with this tune. Now when compared to the more upbeat, tropical, funky music of the rest of the game, this track is much slower and much calmer. And fun fact about this track, it was actually almost cut from the game due to the enormous amount of system RAM that it used to play, but the song was so beloved that they spent five weeks getting it to function in the game. Now continuing with this, there are countless games that have used music tracks specific to water or snow levels that tend to stand out due to their drastic change in mood. Here's Stardew Valley's Spring Music. And here's Stardew Valley's Winter Music. Another infamous song in this category stems from Mario 64. You know the one. The reason a lot of these songs give you the feels, or make you feel relaxed, or even possibly make you feel sad is all stemmed from the color psychology of the blue hues throughout these levels. If it often seems like in snow and water levels that the music and the visuals tend to just really blend together well, it's because they kind of do. Even if you hated these levels, there's a good chance you like something about them aesthetically. And I can bet blue plays a role in that. Now here's the trippy thing about color theory and color psychology. 
Looking at certain colors can literally cause physiological changes within your body, whether you realize it or not. Research on the effects of blue shows that it can actually slow down your heart rate and can even slow your metabolism and lower your body temperature by a couple degrees. If you've ever been in a classroom or an office that has shades of blue in the chairs or the floors or walls, the likely reason for that is that there's research suggesting that blue can aid in mental clarity and focus, specifically lighter shades of blue. A big reason many police and security uniforms are blue is to promote a sense of calmness and trust, something that is also subconsciously triggered. And one last note about this, which also applies to other colors, is that generally, darker shades tend to promote feelings and emotions, and lighter shades are more geared at triggering concentration and mental awareness. So there's a chance if you like pastels, you might be someone who enjoys being calm. Now, going back to games, I've kind of noticed an interesting pattern when it comes to water and snow levels specifically. There, we've all heard the complaints about, you know, the water temple and water levels, swimming controls, all that stuff, and generally a lot of players tend to hate water levels, and I understand developers drop the ball, you know, with swimming mechanics or game flow or whatever, and that's a whole nother thing. But even though these levels are hated, they tend to be often remembered very clearly. Now, for example, when I think of Crash Bandicoot, I think of the snow and the water levels. And I don't know why, but I can remember them very clearly in my head compared to the jungle or other levels that are kind of foggy in my memory. Now, is that because I spent all that time looking at blue and somehow it helped me remember? I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. Maybe. Just keep in mind, color theory isn't an exact science and it's going to affect everyone differently. When I play Final Fantasy X and I get to Makalania Forest, I always find myself suddenly overcome with a feeling of... melancholy. But in a relaxing way? I won't spoil anything, but all you need to know here is that everything you see is either made of water or crystal. And it's just so... sparkly. Even the music is sparkly. Final Fantasy X actually did an amazing job utilizing water as an overall theme for the game, which obviously means there's going to be a lot of blue to be seen throughout. And since the game revolves around death, I guess it shouldn't be surprising that some areas of the game make me feel sad. Something about snow and ice just really speaks to me personally. Maybe it's because I grew up in the desert and like even to this day, I still have not really experienced snow properly. <laughs> But I have these weird fragmented memories of like uh, sliding on ice blocks as Mario and just being like, wow, this ice block is really relaxing. It's weird, I know. And if you think blue can only be used to make you calm or make you relaxed or make you sad, well, you're wrong. Because it can also be used to create a fear-filled atmosphere. The immediate example that comes to mind is Resident Evil Revelations, the bluest of all Resident Evil games. The same way Resident Evil 4 was washed over with brown in certain parts, this game is also washed over with blue. <laughs> no pun intended. And it works well. Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remake also implement this in areas, and even in parts of the upcoming Resident Evil Village have some blue-hued scenes. There's also Amnesia The Dark Descent, Until Dawn, Bioshock, Soma, and so many others utilizing blue hues to maximize the spooky atmosphere and tension. I think a big part of what makes blue scary is that it resembles an ocean abyss, which in human evolution we are naturally afraid of since we can't see what's lurking in the water. Another way that fear works with the color blue is being able to make you a little nauseous. Ever wonder why the blue M&M was so hated? Oh yes, many people despise them. I'm sorry they added those ugly blue M&Ms! A common Google search is even, do blue M&Ms taste different? They don't, but your brain tells you they do. This is because blue is a subconscious indicator that something is inedible or poisonous. In nature, there are no blue foods that are naturally occurring. Even blueberries are purple. There were even some fad diets in the 70s which used two methods of the same principle. One was the blue light diet, where you change the bulb in your fridge to a blue one, with the theory being that if you see all your food as blue, you lose your appetite, which helps you eat less. 
The other version of this was the blue plate diet, where you would eat off of a blue plate for pretty much the same reason. Either way, eating sends a signal to your brain that you are currently safe, which is not really the case when you're in the middle of a horror situation. It's also a reason why a lot of people chew gum. Uh, that constant chewing is sort of like a relaxing anxiety thing, so if you chew gum all the time, look into that. But also, I'm not a doctor, so like... <laughs> allegedly. But yeah, so when you're scared, eating is usually the last thing that you're thinking about. <laughs> Unless you're Eddie. This town is full of monsters. How can you sit there and eat pizza? She said she was fine by herself. And this is where I will end this video. I could keep talking about more color stuff, but honestly it's just gonna be repetition, and I want to save some stuff for the other colors, because you bet your sweet ass I'm doing a whole series on every single color in the frickin' rainbow, because Oh my god, I love talking about color. Speaking of which, uh, now that I've done blue, which is my favorite color, what color do you think I should do next? Uh, let me know in the comments, and whatever color is the most popular is the one I will do next. Also, let me know your thoughts about what I said today. Is there something that you realized, or did you have any moments, or is there something that I missed that maybe you want to tell me about? Because, yeah. For more content like this and more gaming content, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and like this video, and you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Until next time, I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your extra support means the world to me and helps me keep making content for you guys.